surprisingly it's raining today after a long time uh, so uh, beautiful weather out here and uh, you know today's session uh, is is very exciting uh, in uh, you know it's one of the you know most exciting sessions i've done on ondc and primarily because uh, what it caters to what it targets and what it can unleash is just amazing you know uh, in my view financial services if you look at uh, across all the domains which uh, ondc is catering uh, i think financial services is going to be the largest and the biggest and the most impactful uh, of course i have a lot of reasons for believing that um, and uh, uh you know uh, we will see how it will uh, how it will unlock but uh, you know uh, very excited about this session today today's session is basically going to focus on financial services what o what is happening in financial services in ondc and what's going to happen what are the nuances what are the what is the overview of financial services what's going to happen what is the architecture how it will work uh, you know uh, and those kind of stuff if you are implementing it uh in your buyer app seller app uh, uh if you are basically uh going to be adopting it for your own use case um uh, it is it is an important session for you if you are if you are a ceo cto if you are a product manager if you are developer if you are uh, you know a business owner if you are sme uh, if you are looking for loans if you are a lender buyer or whatever whatever side you are uh, it is important for you to understand what financial services uh, you know uh, is going to be in ondc so uh, uh, today you know uh, i have mohit with me uh, you know mohit are you there uh, i know you had few meetings uh, but i think mohit will 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 join very soon uh, so mohit uh, he is vp of financial services in ondc and uh, he is going to be joining me uh, to basically conduct this webinar uh, what i will do as as a structure of the webinar is that first 15 to 20 minutes you know i'll just take you through what financial services mean and 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 what's the architecture and 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 how the flows will work and those kind of stuff and and you know we would want you to ask a lot of questions because uh, it's important that you know whatever doubt you have you know uh, of course mohit is going to be there and we basically uh, you know plaus.ai we we are the largest ondc rails infrastructure company right now so we have a lot of our own insights into how things happen and how how, how things flow kind of stuff so feel free to ask any questions uh, just give me 15 20 minutes as i run you through the uh, uh, to through the deck in the meantime also if you have any questions uh, feel free to unmute uh, or, or raise your hand and and ask a question uh, we want this to be interactive as much as possible uh, uh so i think mohit is still not joined but uh, i'll continue uh, and as as soon as he joins uh, i mohit i think you're there uh, no okay uh so basically uh, let me let me start with the webinar right so i am assuming you know a lot of you are excited about financial services because you see this as uh, as one of the you know uh, important sessions uh important uh, you know, activity important uh, you know uh, uh, sector that uh, that you are looking at right now uh, from a uh, one sec I'm, yeah so basically let me tell you a little bit about plaus or tier right so we we are in the business of making your ondc journey simpler right? and what we do is that we provide pre built bundled tech solutions so that you go live in the network you become part of ondc network very very quickly right and and we have uh, you know the whole nine yards of ondc which means that we provide uh, you know uh, whether you look at a buyer app solution seller app solution whether you look at payment solution rsp grievance solution whether you looking at in a mobility network or a, a fintech network or a logistics network or retail network basically we provide you know people solutions that's a very quick about uh, plotch right uh, why why is fintech exciting why is why is financial services exciting is that because because it's, it's it is expected to grow by 5x by the end of the decade right it is a phenomenal growth 40 to 50% annual growth financial services has be has ha you know has happened in the financial services sector in last you know uh, in, in decade and it's gonna it's just gonna you know get unlocked 
much much more because of ondis right while we are seeing you know it's 2 270 to 300 billion right now it is expected to be you know crossing like a trillion dollar uh, by by the end of the uh, year uh, by end of the decade sorry and uh, and 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 ondis is going to unlock lot of lot more uh, 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 you know so it 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 can become like 1.5 trillion 1.3 trillion or, or even more right and and digital financing the 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 and and the reason why you know I, i'll tell you what is you know happening in financial services is that ondc is going first with the lending and and the reason is 60% of fintech is all about lending lending is one of the fastest rising digital lending is one of the fastest rising uh, you know sector uh, in fintech right uh, so so that's why it's very very exciting uh, you know uh, when i look at these numbers and 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 get very excited now ondc is not just a network you know i have done a lot of sessions on ondc uh, so i can i usually say ondc is a network right uh, uh, it's a two sided network where you have one side you have buyer apps another side you have seller apps buyer apps bring traffic uh, into the network and seller apps bring supply into net- network right uh, but it's not just a network today it is a network of networks you know right? uh, you have retail network in which basically all your retail categories are live which grocery fnb fashion beauty electronics home you know like health supplements a lot of the categories are live right now across 250 cities you know um, with 50000 sellers so it's a, it is it is a very vibrant re, you know network which is live right now retail uh, logistics is also live primarily for courier services so if you want to buy courier services we actually just launched a courier logistics buyer app as a tsp so if you want to you know buy logistic services uh, uh, hi mohit uh, uh, hi everyone hi uh, hi manoj hey uh, uh, sorry for joining late uh, guys please continue and i think we'll yeah. get to uh, so uh, so mohit is here so he will definitely shed lot more light into <laughs> what's happening in financial services uh, so mohit i'm just going through the first 15 yeah. 20 minutes of deck and uh, you know i've uh, requested people to hold the q and a you know uh, uh, till i do that so so primarily uh, you know uh, if you are looking for courier you know you go to logistics network uh, if you are looking to you know looking for auto rickshaw rides taxi rides you know you get into mobility network right where namayatri is like doing phenomenal right now they're doing like 80000 rides every day in bangalore itself right uh so it's and that has happened last six months only right and and financial services which is basically the focus of the session today uh, is going to comprise you know lending insurance and mutual funds uh, and, and and lot more uh, uh, i think mohit will tell you a lot more about it but but fine you know uh, it is primarily these three that you know uh, you know uh, is being talked about and lending is the first use case that has been picked up uh, in the financial services and uh, and 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 as i said you know the reasons are because 60% of 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 fintech is digital lending uh one sec chat is here yeah so and and uh, you know odc is going to do lot of unlocking you know from a 100 billion ecom 2023 to 500 billion from financial of say being 300 billion to 1.5 trillion i think being 400 billion to you know becoming like a 0.8 trillion and 10 billion mobility to 100 billion all this is happening in this decade uh, in all these networks and ondc is going to unlock lot more uh, because because of the open network right it, because it's allowing lot more folks to join uh, you know digital uh, e-commerce uh uh and and making it very very seamless uh, and in a democratic way right so a lot of unlocking uh ondc will do in all these sectors uh and uh i think there's a, there's a lag yeah sorry uh and uh, basically that's this uh this whole uh if you look at from a financial service perspective right so lending is 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 one of the use cases that has been picked up insurance i think will come later and then after that mutual funds in lending basically personal loan is something uh, you know uh, has one of the you know uh, use case that has been picked up um, and the gst based loans for 
you know, proprietors, sole proprietors, right? So, so uh, basically, if you are if you are if you're looking for personal loan of you know ten thousand rupees to you know like maybe ten lakh rupees, uh, usually these are you know smaller ticket items compared to larger uh, business loans, right? Uh, if you uh, and GST based loans, if if you are a sole proprietor, so basically today it is just for sole proprietors that the lending network has been opened. But in future, it will be for uh, other, 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 you know, other, uh, you know, you know, corporates and other, you know, business types. Uh, so if you have, if you have, if you're filing returns, right? If you have GST invoices, um, you know, if you basically have a GST number, you can get loan, uh, you know, in in ONDC network, right? So if so, two categories. Uh, one category is basically. Uh, it uh, yeah so one category is uh, personal unsecured loan and another category is gst based loans for sole proprietors so these are the two offerings which are going live right now and and whatever we are going to talk today is going to be around this right now let me give you a little bit understanding of how how the network looks like right network as i said uh, it is a two sided network right uh, on one side you have buyer apps which are primarily bringing borrowers into the network right uh, and and uh, another side you have lender apps or seller apps which is primarily bringing their lending products uh, into the network right so for example you may have icsa bank you know hdfc bank or you know uh, you know all these nbfcs who will be on the lender app side and buyer apps primarily will be you know can be anyone you know, literally, it can be anyone. Uh, but of course, there are some you know RBI guidelines that you have to adhere to. But let's assume Paytm is there, phone pay is there, ET money is there, you know, Spice money is there. Uh, these are you know uh, people who play in fintech domain. Uh, they they are buyer apps. Uh, in future, you may find like I, I'm just you know I'm just imagining right. Even telcos can be there, or you know even uh, other. Uh, entities uh, like e-commerce companies can be there, um, you know. So, so, so basically, uh, bor borrower apps, bu buyer apps bring borrower into the network who are looking for loans, and lender apps br are bringing, uh, you know, uh, their you know uh, products, lending products. Now, if you notice, there is no seller seller side here. Usually, in in a retail domain, you will see there is a seller app and there is a seller. Here, basically, there is no seller. There is no other entity behind the lender app, right? So primarily, uh, you know, people who have their lending products. So you, you, aggregators can are not, you know, expected to be on the lender app side. Right? So primarily, who have core lending products are primarily your banks and BFCs and people people who have, you know, RBI certified, you know, uh, you know, uh, compliant uh, products. They can basically be on the lender app side. So so that's how the how the network is structured. And uh, uh, if you look at you know how the lending flow will work, I'll quickly tell you how the lending flow will work in 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 in, in financial services ONDC. Is there is a there is a first step is that you register as a borrower and and there is a loan application process. There is a loan application process which happens through uh, the ONDC protocol which has come up uh, which ONDC has come up for the financial services uh, for lending, right? And then there's a loan underwriting, basically where the loan product is created is specific to a loan application, which may contain your loan tenure, your loan amount, your you know loan interest rate and other stuff, terms and conditions kind of stuff, right? And then there's a KYC and uh, happens of the borrower where it can be, you know, uh, Aadhaar based uh, KYC, Udyam certificate based KYC and those kind of stuff, right? And then the eNash also is set up. eNash is set up so that you know the 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 payment, the EMI payments can be automatically made from the bank account of of uh, of uh, the of the you know uh, borrower, and so so that you don't have to follow up for the payments kind of stuff, right? And then there is a loan agreement and disbursal process, and then there is a loan payment and prepayment process. So basically, that's how the it's it's broadly you know if you, if uh, I'll go into a lot more detail in the, my next slide, but broadly these are the five steps that you will see uh, in in the lending flow kind of stuff, right? Uh, 
and uh, you know uh, it, it is it is it 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 basically uses lot of dpi you know uh, digital public infrastructure uh, um, you know, for this whole process to be completely seamless and completely digital right there's there's nothing here which is uh, offline kyc you know there's nothing here which is uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, not, nothing here which is offline in nature it's completely yeah, digital any yeah. questions anyone has before i go to the you know more you know depth of the stuff manoj will you be providing the slides after the call or should we plan to take pictures oh no 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 don't take pictures you i'll give you the slides uh, if you're part of the whatsapp community or linkedin or uh, through email uh, you know whatever channel you have come here is the channel i'll distribute so so don't okay. worry about the slides and and you know this is completely open uh, it will be also put up on youtube the recording so it's it will be available uh, any other question from anyone manoj we had a few in the chat uh... oh, okay okay so oh, my voice is breaking my my voice is completely fine right? because someone said my voice is breaking up uh, is there a possibility of overlap between the working areas of ONDC and Oaken? Uh, Mohit, uh, is there some some you want something you want to comment on? Uh, what Mohit, you are not audible. Sorry, I didn't realize I was on mute. Uh, there, right? Oh, this one. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I think uh, I think regarding the question uh, around ONDC and Oaken, so Oaken uh, is sort of a I would say that's a set of parallel sort of initiative, separate initiative, which is sort of right now there, which is focused on MSME lending there, right? Now at ONDC, our focus is broader, right? We are looking at the three areas of financial services there, right? Which is lending, insurance, and investments. And within lending, it's not limited to MSME lending. I think, of course, that's one of the key areas. But then we are also looking at retail, secured, unsecured. And I think in future, we'll be looking at agri as well there, right? So I would say what... We are sort of what doing is obviously covers a, a larger spectrum of financial services than sort of being narrowly focused on, uh, you know, lending, which I believe Oken is sort of focused on uh, lending for MSMEs. Yeah, yeah. So basically, it is it is much more, uh, you know, of uh, you know, as Mohit said, insurance, mutual funds, a lot lot of other things will come uh, in future, and lending also a lot more. Uh, will lender app act as a seller app? Yes, lender app is a seller app. What does this mean that one-to-one -one relationship that some of these apps have with specific banks banks will go away? See, I think the one-to-one -one, one relationship they may have, may still have, but the, the, what the ONDC is an open network and, and, and there'll be you know, people who will come on the lender app side, they'll be coming on the, uh, uh, on, the, on the buyer app side, right? And they will forge new, you know, new relationships, which is going to be more dynamic and open in nature, right? So, yeah. uh, so we don't know about that. Uh, anything you want to add, Abhishek? Yeah, I'll, I'll just add to, I think, Manoj, what you said. Absolutely. I think the, you know, there are existing relationships and obviously they'll sort of continue as well. I think the advantage of ONDC is, I think the biggest advantage I can think of is the dynamic contract, right? So even if as a lender, sorry, as a, as a buyer app, right, you have, let's say, relationships with five lenders or 10 lenders over there. Now, what this allows you to kind of scale up, let's say, lender supply massively over there and all of this in a dynamic manner, right? So you... Yes. agree upon terms and conditions you know commercials all of that in a dynamic contract over there right so you don't really need to kind of invest fixed resources in terms of setting up partnerships and uh you know agreements offline there as well so and then all of that actually helps in terms of more convergence for you right and and, and then better options for the customers right both in terms of number of offers and maybe over time even the competitive nature of the offers will also improve because there's more competition there right uh, as well so yeah that's one no that. definitely definitely uh, all these flow process are handled at lender app or mixed between buyer app. So it's a it's it is it is a flow between buyer app and seller app. It's not just a lender app flow. What I just showed, uh, and I'll I'll get into more detail in my current slide. Any reason why KYC's post loan underwriting will will one not need inputs regarding the customer before underwriting can be done? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think in the GST base, uh, uh, the GST in the underwriting process, what happens is that uh, you know, I think this slide, which I'm just going to present is going to be more useful in that. There are four things primarily that we are looking at. Uh, it can be more also. Uh, one thing is that whatever, you know, GST certificates, the uh, GST returns 
GST data, you know, that, that is given uh, from the buyer app to the seller app. Uh, that basically forms one input for the underwriting. Second thing is that you can soft, do a soft pull from the credit bureau and, and get some kind of credit rating, right? Uh, third thing is then there's a account aggregator, you know, consent-based bank statement sharing, which, which is there. So you can basically take uh, you know, the bank statements uh, from, from of the borrower, right? Uh, and, and they can be other alternate data in the future. I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm assuming is that ONDC's data will become alternate data also for underwriting uh, some of these uh, products, right? Uh, so, so, so KYC is just, is, is, correct me if I'm wrong, but KYC is a process where you are verifying whether the customer is genuine borrower, you know, they are AML guidelines and time money laundering guidelines because of the RBI said the KYC has to be done. And so, so it's basically a process where before you give the money, I want to know whom I'm giving kind of thing, right? Got but it, it. loan so, lo loan product is more about you know what what the customer you know the credit assessment of the customer the borrower and 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 therefore uh, Mohit, do you want to add uh... no no completely second so I think like I I I sort of concur with you see KYC essentially is a mechanism to authenticate or identify you know or verify the identity of the individual who is going to receive the disbursement right you pretty much know everything about the customer in terms of the details prior to that, right? When let's say there's a long, there's a form that is shared by the lender and then uh, the customer actually shares all the details there and then you can get it, uh, get income details from account aggregator and GST as well. So from an underwriting perspective, you pretty much have everything over there. Before dispersal, you want to kind of verify the identity. Now, this can be done digitally. I think in future, let's say if there's a larger dispersal that needs to be done, we'll also probably have a provision where you can also have a person individually going and then verifying the identity of the person if required there, right? Uh, for larger ticket size loan as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, next question is, how is the process different from current digital lending player? Uh, so basically, uh, there are a lot of differences here. Uh, one thing is that uh, uh, the previous question actually answered that, uh, you know, uh, that is that there's no one-to-one -one relationship, right? It is basically that I, as a borrower, right? If I am looking for a loan, I want the best rate. I want in a transparent manner and I want in an open market setting, right? So basically, so that I can get the best tenure, I can get the best, uh, you know, uh, loan amount, loan of, uh, and then I can get the best interest rate, right? And and of, and so basically, I want a lot of, lot of options in front of me, right? Uh, and that is basically the power of ONDC is that for the borrower, I'm uh, you you know I'm being presented by a multitude, a large set of of lending up, up, you know options, right? Lender options. For the lender, basically, uh, you know, I uh, today I might have channels where through which I'll source these you know uh, leads. Uh, you know, just just imagine from a lender perspective, that headache is no no longer for them. You know, uh, suddenly all the people on the other side, the buyer apps, you know, uh, you know, with, with the traffic of like 50 crore, 60 crore customers coming, you know, total, you know, just, just providing a lot of leads and, and, you know, uh, to me, um, so, so, so from a lender app side, it is also very interesting that suddenly I have a lot of, you know, uh, channels which have opened up for, for loan origination kind of stuff. Right. So, uh, so basically it's, it is, it is in that, you know, uh, you know, broadly, that's that's what the difference is uh, for for as a benefit for the borrower and the lender. Anything you want to add, Mohit? Uh, uh... Yeah, yeah. No, so I'll just like to add that. You know, when it comes to financial services, you know, especially credit, insurance, and investments, uh, I mean, probably the top 10, 15 crore Indians. Yes, it they you know the benefit for them, the big benefit for them is having a lot more options there, right? because of lender aggregation at a massive scale. But then beyond that, I think the big advantage is just getting access because I think access itself is an issue beyond let's say top 10, 15 crore Indians there, right? And what this also solves for is in effect, providing access to the next, I would say 30, 40, 50 crore Indians, credit worthy Indians as well, to help them kind of get these offers on the fly there as well, right? So that's just getting access itself is a big benefit for the next set of 10, 15, 20, 30 crore Indians there as well. So, so it's like that. No, no, definitely. I, I completely concur. I think the access is is something, you know, because of the democratic nature 
of of ondc it comes naturally um, you know so and it is a big you know pain point you know like upi made so so payments accessible to all the small you know you know individual sellers kind of stuff um, selling from you know vegetable vendors and those kind of stuff similarly i think a lot of unlocking ondc will do uh, from a lending perspective uh, where you know in making that inclusive in nature so that you know a lot more people can participate in the lending uh, opportunity uh, next question who is responsible for kyc and credit score uh, ondc or lender i think oh, oh, i uh, might correct me but i can speak because i i know a lot about ondc now but yeah, yeah. ondc doesn't come into picture from when it comes to operations of the network uh, from the perspective of lending and buying you know borrowing right so so definitely kyc is a process and credit score is a process which lender has to do and lender app has to do of course the borrower app also in some ways uh, you know uh, helps in the process of uh, initiation of kyc uh, process so that you know there is a data exchange which happens but primarily it is the lender app's responsibility uh, um, uh, you know kyc and this kind of stuff uh, there seems to be something that the rbi innovation hub has come up with recently on digital credits side are we seeing any many parallel developments within the digital infra space uh Okay. Yeah, so I mean, I'm probably I, not yeah. aware of it. Yeah, Mohit, you. Yeah, I'll, I'll just sort of chime in on that. Like, uh, I think my understanding of what RBI sort of innovation hub has come up with, or I think they're sort of in the process of still sort of rolling it out, uh, is is more of a platform with uh, curated data across various dimensions. Let's say, for example, land record data there, right? Uh, there is uh, probably dairy data, right? How much produces sort of a particular dairy or a you know, a cow farm actually producing there as well and different sort of data uh, dimensions there as well. So it's more of a platform. I see that as a strong complement to what we are doing at ONDC because what we're doing essentially are creating standard rails or protocols. And what RBI Innovation Hub is kind of creating is standardized platform that can be consumed from a data perspective by banks, right? Which is which can be utilized for underwriting. So I think that's a sort of strong complement because the data is something that resides in the platform there, which can be consumed by APIs, right, by the lenders. And standard rails for distribution is what actually ONDC helps uh, to the lenders as well as the buyer apps as well. Oh, no, definitely. So, I think that will help the underwriting process better because you have alternate data sources coming, as you said, for lending to people who, you know, um, on the agriculture side and, and dairy side. And how many cows they have, and those kinds of what's how much milk they generate, kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. uh, so that's basically who will own the data, buyer or the lender. Manoj, uh, I have a suggestion. Yeah. Uh, uh, the suggestion is to take questions towards the end, otherwise, the questions will keep coming and you'll never be able to <laughs> complete no, the no, I, com I, I agree. I agree. Uh, so I, I'll, 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 I'll take this uh, final question, then we'll, we'll get into the, the flow of the deck. Uh, uh, who will own the data buyer the lender i think it is uh, you know primarily kyc uh, uh, you know uh, you know your underwriting data of credit and uh, those kind of stuff um, your bank statements um, you know uh, most e nash all thing is driven by the lender app uh, whatever the whatever the customer has shared as a part of the registration process uh, is is with the buyer app uh, so it's a mix I, in, in my view but primarily if you look at any sensitive data uh, of bank statements and eNash and and other stuffs, is actually you know in the flow, uh, it it is being handled in the lender app, uh, where the lender app is 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 executing the consents, uh, executing the you know credit scores, uh, executing the eNash and setup and and the eKYC and all those things, right? So, so so. So, so I can't tell you exactly. Uh, at least, Mohit, correct me if I'm wrong. But who will who will own what data? But but whatever data is a part of the application process has been shared by the borrower to the buyer app. Probably will will that like GST number and the Aadhaar number and your name and address and all those things it will be will will there with the borrower app. But other things like your you know bank statement, all those things will be lender app. Buyer app doesn't see those. Um, or do you want to add yeah. anything? I, I don't know. No, no, absolutely. I think you've sort of covered it, Manoj. Uh, you know, most of the critical financial data is going to be with the lender, right? And then obviously, uh, it's it's all sort of covered by, by the the new DEPA sort of data protection sort of uh, you know act as well, right? So that's pretty much part of the the policy, ONDC policy as well. It applies there. 
uh basic details can be it will be captured by the buyer application so i think basic details phone number uh pan card i think that 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 will stay with the the buyer app as well right yes yes so prakash uh, i'll i'll take your answer question you know uh, just just you know i'll complete the flow and then we'll take your questions from from you starting from you so basically if you look at uh, you know here the five step that i that i showed in the in the previous slide is broken down into lot more detail and 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 you know uh, we can go into you know depth here but primarily if you look at right uh, ondc protocol has four core apis to complete the transaction uh, four core apis and then the you know respective callbacks right so it's is search select init and confirm this basically are the four things which which completes the flow and then on the on the seller app side there is on search on select on init and, and on confirm these are the apis in the protocol which ondc has specified this is a language in which you know uh, which is 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 used in in a way you know if i have to use an analogy for, for a buyer app and seller app to talk to each other right so so, so basically i've tried to break that down into uh, you know as part of the mapping also here where where select and search and those kind of stuff happen right so the, if you look at uh, the flow starts with a borrower requesting for a personal loan or a gst based loan this happens on the buyer app side the one on this side is the buyer app borrower side another side is uh, on this side the dotted line is the lender app right then the lender app basically shares an application form which uh, you know they they say that you know it's required to be filled it's primarily a link uh, it can be a, a embedded form which a buyer app can render on 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 a borrower app can render on on their side kind of stuff right uh, uh, so this this application form is what is filled by the by the borrower um, in the process now this also happens on the borrower app side in the process the 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 borrower app can ping gs let's say they are looking for a gst loan right the 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 buyer app can basically the borrower app can basically you know ping the gsp and 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 get the get the bank uh, the gst returns and invoices and those kind of stuff right and that basically is then shared with the with the with the uh, uh, lender app Right. Now, lender app basically takes now the underwriting process happens. So the first process was the loan application process, is the step one. Right now, the underwriting process is happening on the on the lender app side, is the second step. Right now, the second step basically you have GST data for you know you have you can you know, the lender app will you know get a you know a credit score from a credit bureau. Uh, then there is a also in this process is uh, you know lender app will generate a cons consent request. Through account aggregator, which which basically mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, is is approved by the borrower. So in that process, the the lender app also gets a bank statement, right? So this basically, uh, and then there can be alternate data sources which lender app can have, which may be out of the scope here. But uh, they can uh, take all this and 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 basically underwrite a loan offer, right? Which can have you know uh, your tenure and the other stuffs, which uh, you know uh, loan basically it primarily has three things: your loan amount, your loan tenure, and your and and interest rate, right? And this basically is is uh, is uh, now I I miss one point in the first 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 thing which happens you know when when someone is requesting for a loan, right? It is actually that 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 the first step itself is broadcasted to 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 into the network that. Basically, someone is looking for a personal loan, or someone is looking for a GST based loan, right? And then there's multiple lender apps will basically respond to it, right? So actually, uh, in the step one itself, the the borrower will see, uh, you know, uh, you know, lender one, lend, lender app, you know, let's say I'm just saying example, ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank, uh, and and any other NBFC like Muthoot, uh, who's offering like a loan kind of stuff, right? So. The, these and and then and then basically uh, borrower selects it. So that's basically the the, the piece I missed because it's important because search broadcast is a way to democratize the network and is important piece of ONDC network. Uh, now coming to underwriting, once the underwriting happens, uh, the consent happens uh, through account aggregator. There's a loan offer which is given, and this is now a, a, a uh, you know lend one lender app to the the borrower. 
this this now the other lender apps are not participating in this because the lend the borrower has selected a specific lender uh, idfc bank or icic bank um, so now the process below is completely point to point um, there is no broadcast involved right so so this loan offer is given to the to to the to the borrower borrower accepts that offer and then there is a kyc initiation which happens the kyc uh, you know for for a personal loan is just aadhar based you know it can be aadhar based e kyc using digi locker if you are also you know uh, looking for gst loan as a sole proprietor you have to do udyam certificate you know kyc you know, using digi locker right so that happens and then you know uh, uh, once the kyc is successful then the e dash setup is happen e dash is primarily a way to auto debit your account uh, for a specific you know uh, purpose in this case that you have taken a loan so you know um, you are giving approval that for emi payments automatic debit can happen from my bank account that's basically the process here and then the 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 uh, then basically uh, a, a loan agreement has been created the loan agreement is is shared with the with uh, with the borrower app the borrower the borrower then e signs again there is no there is no offline process here e signs it uh, and then after that once the the borrower has e signed it it basically loan is sanctioned and 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 loan is then uh, basically so loan is uh, sanctioned e signs and then basically there's a dispersal process happen and and then there's a prepayment process also involved here uh, you know which basically can mean that I, you know i pay the whole amount and those kind of stuff um, before the end of the tenure so so that's basically is is a very broad uh, you know uh, the four five steps that i have you know shown in the previous slide i broke them down into a little bit more granular um, uh, you know of course there's a lot more depth here which i'll skip Anything you want to add, Mohit? Uh, it it uh, it is a bit detailed, but uh... yeah, no, no. I think you sort of uh, covered it, Manoj. I just like one thing I would like to add is that the account aggregator uh, information, which is like in the case of personal loan, it's sort of a quasi income statement, right? What you're sort of uh, getting, which is bank account statement, there, right? Uh, is consumed by the lenders in their underwriting process, there, right? So that's sort of consumed before the offer is generated. Now, yes. we will have a provision to sort of seek a multi-lender consent there, right? So that let's say the let's say a customer fills in one, you know, gives one consent via OTP, and that consent actually suffices for multiple lenders to get the data from the FI piece there, right? The, the income data via FI piece. So they so multiple lenders can actually consume that to create their offers, and then that those offers can be presented to the customer right there. So just just wanted to kind of uh, add in that yeah. part. There, right? Yeah. No, definitely. I think consent process is is something you know where you know it can be simplified. You know, I think uh, given that the multiple lenders are there, multiple consents might come for a yeah. borrower, right? So so yeah. So, uh, in this process, who bears the cost of uh, KYC, account aggregator cost, credit bureau cost, etc.? So, the KYC cost is borne by the lender. Uh, same with Sybil, which is sort of the, the bureau pull, my back. Uh, soft pull cost, and then obviously, if, if there's a disbursement, then, then also the hard pull there as well. Uh, the other one, I think it's the third one you mentioned, account aggregator there, right? Right. Yeah, so account aggregator cost essentially it's uh, it's borne by the lender also again there right, which is basically getting the data from as an FI uh, FIU there right. So there is a sort of I believe there is this, some sort of pur purple kind of a cost that account aggregators charge right. So that will be borne by them uh, by the uh, by the uh, lenders there. Okay. Yeah. And in terms of communication between the uh, borrower and lender apps through ONDC, is it a publish subscribe mechanism where you know the borrower app would publish something on the ONDC bus? So whichever lender apps are registered with ONDC, they'll get that on a subscription basis, and then they'll all be able to see the data, and then they'll be able to publish their loan products. And similarly, any buyer app would be able to subscribe to that signal, and then view all the loan products so how does the communication mechanism yeah work? so I'll, I'll, okay so i'll just take a step back uh ondc doesn't have a switch model right so it's not like you're hitting a central switch then that switch is actually routing your request anywhere so that's that's not the design uh 
the design is pretty much peer to peer but the rails are standardized by ondc right the conversation rails are designed you know standardized by ondc the way this works is that any time a new participant registers on ondc and i think i'm sure manoj would would know this best out there as well there is a subscriber id that is generated which is a unique key for a participant on the network uh, and their details are actually mentioned in the registry ondc registry now any participant which is there in the ondc registry and, and obviously is in live in production can be accessed by the other side. So if you're a buyer, you can actually access lenders. And then if you're a lender, you can access buyers as long as there is a valid live subscriber ID that you possess at that point in time. Yeah. Yes, completely. Uh, so uh, also there's uh, authentication keys and encryption keys that, you know, so that, you know, data, whatever, hap you know, communication which happens between the borrower app and seller app and the lender app is completely, you know, uh, you know, authenticated and encrypted. So, so, so that is something, you know, uh, is also there if you are live in the network. Uh, uh, any other question? Uh, yeah, I have one like? question. Yes. Yeah. So you said that uh, on the borrower app, the, the borrower basically will be able to see the lender names, right? And uh, what all uh, interest rate and all they, they are offering. So out of those options, customer will select one and then we'll go ahead with the journey. But if we go by the journey which is explained on the ondc website it says that the borrower app will capture the details and it will send the details to all the lenders lenders will underwrite basis the details which they have received and then they will give the offer and then customer can select the best one so Correct. is it like both journeys uh, are possible and it depends on how buyer has uh, buyer app has basically implemented it yeah so see the way i mean and we when we such obviously the buyer app can actually define the user experience but essentially, my best understanding is that let's say there are like five lenders and each of them have a specific, you know, form, right, where they capture customer details. They share this form with the with the buyer app. Buyer app can put up one consolidated mm -hmm. form, right, which is going to be okay. a union of all these forms, let's say, kind of thing, right? They capture those details and then those details are individually shared with each of those lenders who have earlier shown interest in a, they have the, the product which is required by the customer, which is, let's say, a personal loan there as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So it, in effect, that's like a broadcast that you're doing over there. You're sharing the customer details with all the lenders who have that particular product. Now those lenders actually do the underwriting at their end and they come back with an offer if they have to there as well. So I think that's the design over here in this case. So basically details will be uh, collected once and it will be sent to all lenders and then lenders can decide whether they want to offer the uh, loan or not and if they want to at what interest rate and uh, tenor and all yeah just just one caveat there all lenders who have actually shared their form as in they have expressed okay. an interest to capture the customer details okay so uh, excuse me just the follow up here yeah so when we say all the lenders would have my assumption is at the time of onboarding lenders would give their form as to whatever information they want to capture to do their underwriting so similarly, when the buyer app is registering, the buyer app will get access of, let's say 100 lenders onboarded. These are 100 different forms. Now you go and design whatever your uh, UX needs to be and make sure you're covering all the partners. There's quite a possibility buyer would be in business with only 50 out of those 100 lenders. That's a possibility, right? No, what do you mean by they'll be in business with 50 out of 100? So uh, are we saying all the buyers are open to showing the loan offers from all the lenders who have registered. Correct. Right? There would still be an inter-party agreement. And who have that particular product. So as a lender, if I don't have personal loan, then I mean, God, I'll not be yeah. visible. Hello. So then it's left ah, up to okay. the buyer to prepare no, the form no. under UX that covers all the hundred forms in theory, and yeah. then is able to publish ah. it out for the lenders to pick and choose, do their underwriting and respond back to them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. How they define the user experience because I understand that you can't show 100 forms to a customer. I think that's upon the buyer app to define the best user experience there. Correct, correct. That will be left up to them, their algorithms, their IP. Whoever does a better job there gets the edge in the market, so to speak. Thank you. Hi, so just to expand on this one, effectively what we are seeing is that the advantage of the platform is twofold. One is that underwriting becomes smoother because you have access to a lot of data. Uh, in terms of platforms transacting on ONDC, uh, the restaurants or any 
any of the borrowers right and the other is you are saying that the uh, buyer app doesn't have to separately go and partner with the lender they simply get access to all the lenders right yeah partner as well as integrations like the bilateral integrations the custom integrations that's no longer required because everybody is talking to each other in on on common sort of protocol common set of rails there i think this is a big plus from a implementation perspective yeah. i can tell you because we implement the architecture is that you no know, you know the buyer apps the seller apps individually don't need to build apis there is this whole this single ontc apis and you use it right in fact we have seen some people having their apis are dropping it and saying yeah, i'll use ontc apis you use this apis to integrate with me kind of stuff so it's a big plus which mohit is saying that uh, each of them don't need to do it you know individual Integration. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. On the, uh, so I have a question. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, is it possible for us buyers to analyze other parts of all this data and then do the underwriting? So, for let's say, no. Abhi to khali. Uh, for now, it is only personal lending. But moving forward, if there is a uh, you know a Kirana store and they are on ONDC, can we use that you know ONDC data about how many orders they are getting and all that kind of stuff? And build an app, landing app around it, and use that O and D C data to do underwriting ourselves. Is it possible? So, are you a buyer application here or a seller? No, no. So I can have two options, right? One, yeah. I build a seller app for the Kirana and all the F M C G stuff that Kirana app has registered, and then I, I can become a buyer app for the lending journey. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's that can be the possibility. now i think the only thing over here is let's say if you are capturing data proprietary data that you basically want to utilize in underwriting now for that what what we will be doing like ondc will be sort of creating derived data structure which will allow let's say any borrower or a potential borrower to kind of share the consent with the platform they are interacting to share their interaction data and non maybe you know in a sort of an aggregated form with the potential lenders so that's a framework that will be sort of bringing in which will allow any platform any sort of data that they are capturing to be shared with lenders in a sort of a consented mechanism there as well yeah so that's pretty okay, much so, something that i'm going to do there yeah i can share my own data to the lenders for them to underwrite this like you know so they can use that data to underwrite and you know check yeah. the credit worthiness correct okay. correct it's not there right now i mean i mean this is like a functionality plan you know frankly which is there uh, next 3 to 6 months there right uh but yeah that's something that we plan to sort of bring on the protocol okay yeah we had a quick question manoj i think you were saying so the api or the taxonomy is already defined right on the seller side so there is a reference api for sellers to return as part of a search so it could be that all the sellers could comply to that api so there they might not the buyer side may, need not build separate forms for combining everything right that's yeah so basically api is a standardized as mohit was saying there is it is uh, ondc rails is standardized uh, sure. the communication between buyer and seller app so so each of them are implementing the same apis right uh, and, and on the borrow okay. apps borrower apps also they implementing the the same structure so they can talk to each other so so there is no today what happens is if i go to icic bank and if i want to integrate a, a digital lending flow i will have to use icic bank's apis then i go to hdfc i implement hdfc bank's apis right so i have yeah. to do multiple integrations if there are like thousand lender apps you now just imagine you know uh, how how yeah. difficult it is right but in terms of the schema i think that's been kind of defined i think this is yes. an ideal schema for you know yes. for the sellers yes. to respond yes. back yes. Yes. Okay. this is yeah. this is the schema which is defined and you get certified for it that you know schema is actually what schema ondc has said and and that's and then you basically become live the certification process uh just one more question on this uh the yeah, data which will be shared with lenders will be same right means like uh, no lender can ask for extra data it's defined that this much data you will get for underwriting and basis that you have to take decision yeah so see i mean there could be a few fields that might be different let's say in the forms more or less we expect let's say for unsecured kind of a use case it's going to be common set of fields that most underwriters or most lenders actually need right but then there could be few minor modifications for example one lender might ask for pan details as well as phone number other might just ask for phone number or pan right maybe it's redundant in their database there right so we do expect that there will be some variations but not a lot there right uh in terms of how much data they get uh for a particular lead there 
and how the commercial model work here yeah so just like retail if you guys are familiar with the retail commercial construct which is uh there is a buyer finder fee linked to each and every transaction which is communicated during the search phase itself so when the buyer application actually does the search query they actually communicate what's the buyer finder fee in terms of percentage of the loan amount uh in terms of that will be eventually disbursed now if that's agreeable to the lender and that's where the lender decides to proceed with the process and then share their catalog uh and and form right for that particular customer uh in extension to the earlier question um uh, would the data sources from lender to lender vary uh, maybe say if uh, one lender wanted some alternate data as an additional uh, uh, data source so would that uh, be allowed no so see lenders on their own if they have access to alternate data i mean that there's nothing preventing them from using that to create a offer right in addition to account aggregated data and bureau data there right if they have i don't know telco data already or, or some other source there right Uh, they can obviously consume that i think the only constraint is that all the lenders will have to kind of return their offers in a defined time period so that the buyer app can actually show all those offers at once right uh, so maybe that could be like 30 to 60 seconds and that's something that we are defining at this point in time uh but yeah the lenders can consume whichever data sources they have access to you know in a compliant manner obviously there as well right on the protocol i think in next phase we will provide a facility where a buyer app if they have proprietary data that they are capturing they could actually with the consent of the borrower share that with the lenders or all the lenders right potentially who are bidding for that particular customer i hope that answers the question uh, uh, you know that was sort of yeah, asked yeah, thank, thank you thank you moy any other question uh, i have uh, two three more slides and then i will wrap it up any other questions anyone um, has yeah, yeah manoj yeah. uh, hi um so basically i just have one uh, one or couple of questions one one is around this account aggregator is supposed to be onboarded by the buyer app or it would be an individual entity on the ondc platform that uh, so because uh, the cost perspective or the uh, settlement payment settlement has to be taken care and if it has to be onboarded by the buyer app there is another challenge which comes across because account aggregators uh, can only be um, onboarded by the regulated entities uh, either by uh, rbi so for the buyer app it's just a, a sort of a network participant on ondc so that point uh, i'm uh, i'm not able to uh, understand what should be done here yeah yeah <clears throat> so see i think uh, account aggregator as a i would if you see cr sort of flow over here now that is something which the lender actually needs to have the integration with you know and then account aggregator and they'll be sort of pulling out data from uh, via the account aggregator rails right during the underwriting phase now as an experience now the buyer apps can decide to have a redirection flow over here right where let's say the lender sends the url of an account aggregator once it's invoked there on the buyer application and the buyer application actually just sort of displays that uh you know that page over there so in effect they don't really need to integrate per se with the account aggregators just that they are invoking the uh you know those journeys or those screens on on the buyer app itself there, right they can also decide to do an embedded flow over there and that's completely up to the buyer application that they want to do a deeply integrated embedded flows uh with the account aggregators there right but i mean in effect again going back to what ondc does we are actually creating digital rails so in effect it's not as if it's going to be provided by ondc uh the the lenders will have this integration and buyer apps have the option of either doing a redirection flow or embedding it uh, as they deem fit for their experience so but how it will work when there are multiple lenders in the back end you cannot uh, invoke the url for one lender right there are multiple yeah. lenders who are doing the underwriting in the back end yeah yeah no i agree i think and that that is sort of the the experience part which i mean can be defined if there's a multi lender scenario uh, the buyer apps possibly will need to have an integration with the 
account aggregator experience, user experience. I mean, I believe there are sort of TSPs and in the market also that sort of provide these embedded flows uh, for account aggregators. Um, and Manoj, uh, I mean, maybe you can sort of share yeah. information if you have there, right, on, on that front. Uh, no, we we are have... doing our own research right now about account, account aggregators and, and uh, you know, we are talking to multiple of those. Uh, yeah. So so I think we will, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to give half information right now. Uh, I think in next, next uh, subsequent sessions, I will be able to give you specific, you know, uh, information on how the how we are doing it, at least in our solution, how we envis and envisaging it, what the kind of user consumer experience that that we are thinking about. Uh, uh, so yeah, so I'll come back to you. I'll take a rain check on that. Come back to you. Uh, any any other questions uh, from anyone? Uh, we'll take Just, more, two uh, or three one more last question, one. if 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 possible. Uh, it was mentioned somewhere during the discussion that there is something called a dynamic contract which is happening, right? So I just wanted to understand what this dynamic contract is. So if I if I am a buyer app and I don't have any relationship with any seller app, lender app right away, today there are 12 lenders, tomorrow 13th one comes in. I don't have an exclusive partnership with this 13th one, but can I on a real-time basis send the uh, you know borrower details to the 13th one as well? Is a dynamic contract happening when the lending is happening or how does this work? That is what I want to call it. Yeah, so absolutely. I think you're right. And that's the, the biggest advantage of standard rails that you don't need to have a integration and be, you know, static offline contracts also. I think that's, that's not required. You can have them, but then it's not really required because essentially what ONDC facilitates in this case via the protocol is a dynamic inf information uh, exchange, which is digitally signed by both the parties, the buyers as well as the sellers, right? And that will have various terms and conditions, right? And that contract will cover the commercials, it will cover maybe liability clauses that will also cover some of the other aspects as well. And there's a sort of separate contract, maybe we can share that with you there as well, which is, uh, it, it works like any other contract and it's obviously something that, uh, can be challenged right? if it all has to be right in a court of law as well. There is so that's the contract which basically is facilitated via ONDC protocols, which gets initiated during the search phase. You you know starting with the buyer find a fee and then is eventually signed when there is a conversion mm -hmm. or a transaction that goes through as well. Okay, okay, good. Are lenders still required to have contracts uh, with credit bureau, account aggregator, et cetera, or is that also covered by ONDC and they don't need to have separate contracts? No, no, so that's not really sort of under the purview, like what, what we're doing. I think lenders have their separate contracts, integrations with credit bureaus, with account aggregators, right? So no, no, but the different one than the lender might have otherwise, right? So do uh, if they plan to be on ONDC, do they need to be uh, also entering into contract with those specific agencies that ONDC has authorized? No, for them it doesn't change. No, so I mean you could be pulling credit bureau data, whether it a lead is coming by ONDC network or it's coming you know from your other channels over there, that doesn't matter. Okay, so these yeah. are not so uh, the credit bureau account aggregator to use these are not mandated by uh, ONDC. These could be any providers that the lenders have. Okay, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, we um, are we are out of time. Unfortunately, sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, we'll take the one last question. Yeah, Deepak this side, um, yeah. Manoj. So just wanted to ask on this uh, seller lender app side where we have. Uh, so can you touch upon any use case or? Uh, pertaining to how we can lend go into the msme lending space where we have these sellers onboarded on ondc network and do you think that any of the new you know, initiatives like a cbdc or a treads platform which is uh, made live by rbi can be used as a lending tool in in the sme landscape So uh, I'm assuming you are saying that you already are there on the retail network and you want to get lending for your sellers uh, through a fintech uh, financial services network, right? Yes. Is that the question? Yes. And from a seller uh, to the lender side, not on the buyer app side. So basically the seller app, so there has to be a buyer app, the borrower app in the in the whole network construct, right? There's a buyer app and then a seller app, right? 
so a uh, seller then will need to create a uh, buyer app if seller is directly coming for the lending uh, you know they, they need to create a buyer app uh, on in the financial services which usually you know we don't we don't uh, you know uh, you know say that that's a best practice right so usually the seller app of the retail network will become a buyer app uh, and give access to your sellers who are borrowers uh, in okay. the financial services right that's that's usually is what is envisaged and that's usually practically i think it will happen uh, uh, but yeah uh, and the other questions you asked right about uh, rbi i think we, we talked about the platform which rbi is building as a as a data source as alternate data source which can be consumed uh, uh, for underwriting uh, uh, in ondc network so it basically it sort of complements which uh, i'm just uh, speaking what mohit said it sort of complements what what uh, what ondc is doing and what rbi is doing um uh, so yeah so uh, unfortunately we are out of time and i know mohit uh, has to uh, has meetings lined up and so i i'm just going to uh, wrap up here i'll not take uh, my slides i'll share the slides i'll share the video with you guys uh, you know mohit uh, you know big thanks to you uh, so thank you, know, you thanks for <laughs> having me over right and it yeah. was great great chatting with the cohort there today. yeah yeah it was very interactive and and thanks for answering all the questions and guys you know we'll see you uh, in the next session we'll try to organize another financial services session because i think there's a lot of interest yeah and uh, and uh, and uh, with that you know i want to wrap here and thank you everyone uh, for your time we'll see you uh, mohit next week any yeah. ways to reach out to you uh mohit you want to share i'll, I'll just put my uh, contact number right uh, you can yeah. always email me on i put my contact number and my email id as well here right here you go i have added it uh, on the chat so uh, if you can email you can sort of call me up many queries we by the way we have the wave one of participants starting i'm, I'm sure my like manoj might have covered before i join but there is sort of a, like a weekly integration cohort there as well that has gotten started right on ondc uh, you know specs for fs as well so in case you guys any of you are there i think manoj maybe you can yeah, share yeah i'll i'll share the link to that uh, mohit i'll probably connect with you how you know maybe i how do i share that but but there is a weekly call which basically on financial services which happen in ondc you know if you are implementing something and if you want to be part of that you know feel free to reach out to me i'll and i'll definitely share the link uh, with you and uh, with that i want to wrap up thank you everyone mohit, and i'll just, i'll see just you just mohit your details are not visible i think you sent it in oh yeah i think sorry. mohit yeah. I, just give me a minute i i sent it to monica it seems right <laughs> sorry it was like we were like chatting and I, it seems that i just did a dm there Uh, yeah. Mohit and Manoj, one last question: How do we get the recordings? I will share with you. I'll share with you. Yeah. So will it be directly emailed or? Whichever channel you have come from, I don't know which channel have used okay. uh, WhatsApp okay. community that we have, or yeah. the LinkedIn, or or the email, or or uh, you know, it definitely whatever channel you have come, I'll I'll distribute through that channel. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. See you.